Hi everyone, it's Cassandra. I know I got the camera focused on my stove, but I am going to teach you how to make a very delicious recipe. It's called pork chop creole. It was my favorite when I was a kid. So I'm starting off with six pork chops. I like to call it the river loin. Don't panic if you don't see pork chop ribs or loin. Um, it's the same thing. These are called center cut, and center cut is ribs. What's important here is, is that you want the marbling. So if you see the fat marble, that makes it for a more tender pork chop, more flavorful. What I'm doing is, the recipe calls for six pork chops. I am searing them. I just want them a little bit brown with a drizzle of olive oil. <clears throat> just a little bit. And I'm on my last pork chop because I didn't want to hold you guys forever watching six pork chops brown. But this is the last one. And I've got all the ingredients ready. And this is what they look like so far. You don't want to fully cook them. When you're searing something that you're going to cook in a liquid method, you only really want to partially sear them so that there's color on the outside. And then as the cooking process goes in the oven, it will finish the rest of the meat and make it tender. And because this is a tomato-based recipe that has um, tomato soup in it, it's going to make your meat more tender because of the acidity. Um, so at this point, like I said, my favorite recipe, I haven't made it in years. So I'm like, oh, I just saw it and really make this, and I'd love to show you guys. I hope you like it. I'm going to tell you all the ingredients um, as I go, you know, through the process of making it. And then I will also type it at the, you know, after the video. I'll have it in the um, notes section or comment section. So you'll see all the ingredients as well. And we're almost done. So, while we're waiting for this to brown, I have a half of an orange pepper, a half of a red pepper, one medium-sized white onion, and a cup of celery. All diced up. You can see the size. And if you like it chunkier, you can make it bigger, but I like mine this size. So again, one medium white onion, half a red pepper, half an orange pepper, one cup, actually one and a half cup celery. Now, the only reason why I have the red and the orange in there is because it's left over from New Year's. We're not really going to do anything. The recipe doesn't call for it, but it's perfectly okay for you to put some peppers in there as well. This is a nice um, splatterproof screen that I got from a very nice lady, like a mom to me. Anyways, you're going to add your vegetables right into the pan. I just cook them. I know I have a lot, but I want to get the deglazing of the pan. You'll probably hear that turn deglazing. Just a little bit more of olive oil. So what deglazing is, as you're cooking this, it's going to take all the good, delicious, crusty off the pan and add it into your recipe. That makes your recipe a lot more flavorful than just using a fresh pan. Don't touch the pan with your bare hands. Use a pot holder with holes in it. Works much better. So this is a tablespoon of chili powder and a dash of cayenne. Again, you don't have to add the cayenne, but we do because this is pork chop creole and I like it a little bit heated.
tablespoon chili powder and a dash or two of cayenne powder. And you're just going to cook this until it's, you know, they're tender. See the deglazing? Took all that sticky stuff right off the pan. Maybe even a little extra iron from the pan itself. Cast iron pans are known for that. It's good for you. If you feel that the liquid is running out on the bottom, you don't want to burn all your vegetables. So it's okay to add a little bit more olive oil. Because if it gets too dry down there, then your chili powder will stick to the pan. Please let that sit for a moment. <clears throat> and also with the pork, as always, you want to rinse your pork. It's called washing. But I don't mean get the dish soap out and wash your meat. I'm talking about just rinse it in cold water both sides. Pat dry with a clean hand towel and that way you don't want to cook any meat um, that's wet with water because it just won't brown right. So you want to make sure you pat it dry with a hand towel and get that extra moisture off. You even do that you know before the seasoning all that because it'll make the seasoning stick better too. But for this recipe I did not need to season the pork chops because they're going to cook and a bunch of seasoning. <clears throat> so with my OCD, I really like to flavor my pork chops, so that's kind of hard for me. I didn't put salt on it, because you don't want to do that either. There's already salt in this recipe. If you salt your pork chops before you cook them, the salt sometimes will take the moisture out of your meat, and then you're wondering why your pork chop, pork chop tastes dry. So I don't like to salt my meat in a wet cooking method. And when I say wet cooking method, I mean this is going to cook in a lot of liquid. The pork chops, once it's done, it's going to be in a pan with a bunch of liquids. So you don't want to salt the meat before that. <clears throat> it still isn't done. It's a lot of vegetables. It's going to take a couple minutes. Sorry for that pause there. I was reading over my recipe. I normally know my recipes by heart, but like I said, I haven't made this in quite a few years. I had to even call my mother and get the recipe because it's from some cookbook out of the 60s or 50s. And I tried looking up this recipe online and I couldn't find it. <clears throat> they were all way too tomato based. I, I don't like that too much. I like this one, but that's because I was raised on this one. And when it was my birthday, my mom would always make, you know, she had five kids. My mom would always make everybody their dinner of their choice. Mine was either stuffed peppers or I'd ask for pork chop creole. And sometime I'll show you how to make the stuffed peppers. These are almost at the consistency that I want. Now at this point, I'm going to be adding this to a big pot so we can start the liquid process. Make sure you scrape the pan you know good get all the all the tasty stuff at the bottom and get it into this pot which i'm going to be showing you i just got to get my holy my 
holy pot holder that I normally burn myself on. All right, let's do a new Christmas one. I can't find my holy one. All right. So, and I'm gonna adjust the microphone and the, the camera a minute. So I'm sorry about that one a second. We're going to get everything in here and I tried my phone doesn't have like a pause feature so I'm sorry if there's some dead pauses here and there but this is definitely fun teaching people out there the important methods on how to cook all right so there's from the first pan. Now I'm gonna add the other ingredients. So the other ingredients consist of one can of red kidney beans with the liquid. So don't drain the liquid, okay? Make sure you get all that from the bottom. <clears throat> one can of corn with the liquid. You need that. Here comes the tomato base. This is the acidity that will make your meat more tender as it cooks. You're doing one can of tomato soup. I use Campbell's condensed. It has to be condensed. And also you need to fill this with a can of water. I mean, sorry, fill this with water. So the recipe also calls for a can of water. And you want to pour that in. Now I also have one and a half teaspoons of salt, if you can see this. And also I have one and a half teaspoons of oregano. Put that in. And then just a couple dashes of pepper. And then one cup of dry rice. Normally, by the way, you're supposed to rinse your rice. I don't rinse my rice. Unless if I'm just making like, um, which by the way, I have no idea how to make delicious Puerto Rican rice. I wish I did. I need someone to teach me how to make that. But you're going to cook this. So if I made like a dish of, uh, what is it? I don't even know what the heck it's called. Spanish rice. If I made Spanish rice, you would want to, I think, rinse the rice. I definitely want to find out, you know, how to make some really good Spanish rice. I don't even think I have the right pan for it. But as for this, so you're going to cook this until it begins to boil. And then once it boils, we're going to put it, let me get my pot here, into a big roasting pan. I don't know if you can really get a good view of that, but a deep roasting pan. I use like my turkey roaster. You're going to put all the boiling liquid into the pan and then arrange your six pork chops on the top. Let them sink a little bit, but not all the way. And then you cover it with foil tightly and you let it cook in your oven for 350 degrees for about one hour until your pork chops are tender. And you also need to move the rice around in the pan and make sure there's no liquid on the bottom. You don't want soup. You want it to be like a rice dish. So that's pretty much this recipe, you know. I don't want to make you wait for this to boil. That's a long time to make you wait. So again, I can repeat myself. So you're going to let this mixture boil. Once it begins to boil, you pour it into this pan evenly. You know, make sure the rice 
because this is what I don't like. Sometimes the rice will sometimes settle. Make sure the rice is even in your pan. And then arrange your pork chops. One, two, three, four, five, six. Evenly, let it sink slightly. Tight foil, 350 degrees in your oven. For one hour, check the bottom, make sure the liquid is gone. You know, it's okay if there's a little bit, but liquid gone. And also spray the pan, I'm sorry. You also want to spray this with pan because it helps your rice mixture not to stick. Anyways, you cook it in the oven, one hour, 350 degrees. You can make this ahead of time. It's great for parties. It brings a different dish to the table. So again, I hope you all enjoy it. I'd love you to submit some comments. Let me know. And everybody stay safe out there. Take care.